Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I wanna to show you my top five ARM-based single board computers for retro gaming. Now, as you can see, I got a ton of stuff. This isn't even every board I own. I got a lot of Raspberry Pi W0s, Raspberry Pi 3s that aren't even in here. I also got a lot of Nano Pi stuff and a few other boards on the way. So in this video, I'm only gonna be covering ARM-based boards. I have a lot of x86 single board computers also. I'll do a separate video if you guys are interested. I've used every single one of these boards for retro gaming. Some of the things I thought about when I picked out these five boards are price, ease of use, and compatibility. I do have a few $200 to $300 single board computers in this pile that will blow the doors off of any of these five boards that I'm about to show you, but I didn't want to put those in here because they're $200 to $300 single board computers. And 99.9% .9 of people who want a retro game aren't going to spend that much just so they can play N64 or Dolphin. With all that out of the way, let's get right into it. I'm going to start at number five. I will have the name of the board, the CPU, the GPU, and the RAM listed on screen. Number five on the list, the Asus Tinkerboard or Asus Tinkerboard, whatever you want to call it. The CPU is a quad-core rock chip 3288 at 1.8 gigahertz. It comes with two gigabytes of LP DDR3 RAM and a four-core Mali-T764 GPU. So this thing does have some potential. The main operating system I use to retro game on this is Android. But recently, RetroPie added basic support for this. It is hard to install. A lot of the stuff doesn't work. There is a great build of Laka out for this that also works good, but I prefer using Android with something like RetroX or Arc Browser. This is a great board, but I wish Asus would hurry up and make some better software for this thing. Number four on the list, the Odroid C2. Quad core, S905 at 1.5 gigahertz. There is a way to overclock this up to 1.8, but it's not that stable. It comes preloaded with two gigabytes of LP DDR3 RAM, and it has a Mali MP450 GPU. Now there are thousands of Android boxes out there that run this Amlogic S905 CPU. Good Linux support, great Android support, and lots of operating systems to go ahead and download and try out. We got a lot of Android builds, a lot of Linux builds, Botocera, Recall Box. You can even install RetroPie under Linux on this unit. The only downside I see to this is the Mali MP450. It only does OpenGL 2.0, which really limits it. Number three, the Raspberry Pi Zero W or the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now I struggled not putting this in second place. I thought about it and thought about it, but there are certain emulators that just don't run well on the Pi Zero. This is definitely my go-to board for portable retro Pi setups or portable Laka, Botocero, Recall Box, whatever you want to run on here, there's probably a distro for you. The Raspberry Pi Zero W has a single core Broadcom BCM 2835 at one gigahertz. You are able to overclock a little, but it doesn't help much. Only 500 megabytes of RAM and the GPU is a video core four. Now I would love to see a quad core one gigabyte version of this in the future, or even a dual core with one gigabyte of RAM. If they just took the internals of the Pi 2, shrunk them down, added Bluetooth and Wi-Fi like they did with the W, you'd have the best single board computer to make portable emulation setups with. And this brings us to number two, the Odroid XU4, an octa-core Samsung Exynos 5422 up to two gigahertz, two gigabytes of LP DDR3 and a Mali T629 MP6. That's a six core GPU. And this thing does really well with N64, PSP and even Dreamcast. For my personal use lately, I've been using the Odroid XU4 over the Raspberry Pi 3 just because it is more powerful. It is a bit more expensive, but you get what you pay for. This thing really does a great job at N64 emulation. Lots of operating systems available like GameStation Turbo, Android, Android TV. There's even basic support for RetroPie. Botocera has a build, Recallbox has a build, Laka and a ton of other distros are available right now to download. You can install them to an SD card or you can get an EMMC module. This board is awesome. If you're interested in any of these boards, I'm gonna leave links to Amazon in the description below. And if you wanna see some more videos on the XU4, I've made a ton of them. I'll leave a playlist in the description. I show you how to install different operating systems, how to set everything up so you can play your favorite retro games. On to number one. You can't deny it, it's the Raspberry Pi 3. Quad core BCM 2837 at 1.2 gigahertz. I've seen some people overclock up to 1.5, one gigabyte of RAM and a video core four. It does struggle playing Dreamcast, N64, and PSP. There are some other emulators that don't work well on here, but overall, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of retro games that you're able to play at full speed on your Raspberry Pi 3 at a really reasonable price, even after you factor in your power supply, controller, and SD card. So the first board I showed you was the Asus Tinkerboard, and the second one I showed you was the Odroid C2. 
Now, if you took all the people working on Odroid software and all the people working on Asus single board computer software, put them together, you still wouldn't have a quarter of the people working on Raspberry Pi 3 software. At $35, it's really hard to beat a board like this. So that's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I'm gonna leave links to eBay and Amazon down below if you wanna pick up any one of these boards. All of them are pretty good. I definitely recommend starting out with the Pi 3 if you wanna move up to the XU4, it's your choice. Now this whole list has been based on my experience and some of the experience of my viewers. I've been messing around with single board computers for years now. I've started with the Raspberry Pi 1 about a week after it released. I'm sure some of you guys are going to disagree with some of the choices I made here, but if you want to make a list of your own and leave it in the comments below, I'll definitely check it out. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching. Real quick, I just wanted to remind you guys that I do have a Patreon, and if you're interested in helping the channel out, I really appreciate it. I also offer monthly Patreon giveaways, so go ahead and check it out. Links in the description.